Hi, my name is Sydney and I'm a PM on the PowerShell team. I'm joined today by Amber, who's a developer on the team. And today we're going to talk to you about PowerShell GET 3.0. Our agenda for this session, we're first going to help you understand what PowerShell GET 3.0 is, um, help you get familiar with the commandlet interface, um, you'll get to understand how the experience will change from previous versions of PowerShell GET. You'll get to see what's available now. Um, we'll demo some awesome new features that have already been released. Um, we'll preview some features that are soon to be released. And you'll get to see the roadmap for the project, what other features you can expect to come in GA timeframe, and where we're looking to head next. Finally, you'll get to see how to be part of design and participate in open source, as we are still early in the development of this module. Is PowerShell GET. PowerShell GET is the module that allows you to do things like find, install, update, and publish PowerShell resources like modules, scripts, and DSC resources. Most commonly, the PowerShell GET module interacts with the PowerShell Gallery, which is the repository for PowerShell resources. Um, PowerShell GET has been around um, for quite a while now um, and is currently on version 2.2.4. Um, with PowerShell GET 3.0, however, um, we attempted to improve the experience of this module with a few goals in mind. Um, so it's important to note that PowerShell GET 3.0 is a complete rewrite of the PowerShell GET with the following goals. First, we wanted to improve the maintainability of the code base. Second, we wanted to address top customer issues with the ethos that we just want to make it work. Um, we also incorporated the philosophy of least surprise as one of our goals. Um, we want the expected outcome to happen most often. We wanted to improve performance, um, and particularly around the speed of find and install operations. Um, we wanted a simplified management of module dependencies, especially as PowerShell is being used in more scenarios like in containers or CI CD systems. And we wanted a more consistent cross platform experience. PowerShell GET was originally designed for Windows PowerShell. Um, and so because of this, there were some inconsistencies around what was available depending on what platform you were using. And we also wanted to have a smooth transition for existing PowerShell users to move to PowerShell GET 3 plus. We understand that PowerShell GET is a critical part of PowerShell scripts and workflows. Um, and so having a transition for users onto the latest version of PowerShell GET was essential into making this project a success. Um, Amber is going to talk a little bit more about how we aimed to achieve these goals, but one point I really want to address overall is why the, these goals necessitated a complete rewrite of the module. Um, in particular, because of some design decisions that were made early on in the module, um, it was really difficult for us to make incremental change on some of these top customer issues. Um, and so by having a rewrite, we were able to not only um, simplify the code, but actually address some of these issues and just make it work. Um, we also believe that by moving to a PRC sharp based module and complete rewrite that we're familiar with, we can maintain the code base more easily, which will allow us to more quickly iterate on new issues as they arise and to help us tackle more quickly some of the issues that have been long standing on our um, top customer asks. So with that, I'm going to transition over to Amber, who's going to talk a little bit more about the high level design of the module. Okay, so at a high level, we had some really important things that we wanted to address when rewriting uh, this module. First and foremost, we really wanted to uh, remove all of the dependencies that PowerShell GET previously had. Uh, so lower versions of PowerShell GET currently need the NuGet executable and package management in order to work. Um, and if you're kind of unfamiliar with package management, the premise behind it is that it was a package manager from which um, package providers could extend its functionality. And so PowerShell GET was a package provider that essentially acted as a wrapper to provide more nuanced uh, functionality for PowerShell modules. Um, and that repository um, is a bit clunky, it's a bit cumbersome, and we've decided to officially deprecate the repository um, Ooh, okay, <laughs> I want to start over on this part. Yeah, yeah, go for it. Uh, okay. Um, sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. I, I took one re redo already. Uh, I hate doing this. It like sucks not doing it live too. Um, 
excuse me. Okay, I'm going to try to look at like notes that I wrote while I'm doing this. It's a little difficult to okay. do. Both. Um, Would it help you if we added animation to this slide so you didn't have it all up at once or do you want it all up? Um, I think having it all up at once is fine. I just okay. like kind of started going on a different like tangent than what yeah, I've totally. been like practicing. It's and then always was like, so different oh. once you yeah, start actually saying it out loud. Yeah, like how do I come back to I this? I never know now? what's going to come out of my mouth. <laughs> it's like it's hard to go from both like being organic, but then also like following yeah. the script. Um, it's like I don't practice. So I don't know what I'm going to say, but then I don't know what I'm going to say next because I have no idea what I'm going to say. <laughs> And actually, I have a question. So yeah. this is recording. Can people see me right now? I think so. OK. But maybe not. OK. I would assume people can see you, but there's always a chance that that's not the case. <laughs> OK. So I'll try to like, because I want to be like looking off into a different direction. But yeah, I'll... that's my challenge is like when you were talking, I started like looking all around and like. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So it's still on camera oh man okay I'm gonna do this is this awkward or is that okay um I let me check like the way you're sitting yeah I have like no it looks uh, it looks normal okay okay cool because I have yeah, like yeah. my laptop on top of my other laptop so I can just like look at the notes oh perfect um okay cool so um at a high level, uh, there were some crucial changes that we wanted to make in the rewrite of PowerShell Get. One of the most important was removing um, all of the dependencies that lower versions of PowerShell Get have. Uh, currently, if you want to use any functionality, um, you need the NuGet executable and you need package management. Um, and both of those we've completely <laughs> removed. OK. Um, Starting over. Uh, so at a high level, there's some important changes that we wanted to incorporate in the new design of PowerShell Get. Uh, first and foremost, we wanted to remove all dependencies. So there's no longer going to be any dependency on the NuGet executable or on package management. Um, and with that, we've completely removed um, the package provider model that was previously in place. Um, and if you're unfamiliar, PowerShell Get started off being a package provider for package management. Uh, so the two have always been inextricably linked together. Um, and the fundamental premise was that it would act as a wrapper for package management and extend the functionality of package management while also providing some more nuance uh, for PowerShell modules. Uh, and package management will officially be deprecated with the release of PowerShell Get 3.0, the GA of 3.0. Um, and we don't really think it's necessary to continue the development because it's such a clunky, cumbersome uh, repository and it hasn't really gotten the adoption that was initially anticipated. Um, and Sydney will talk a little bit more about this later on. Um, but just so you know, there's still going to be security patches, just not active development or acceptances of uh, PRs. Um, and if you have any questions about that, you can always get in contact with Sydney or me, um, and we can help you out with that. Um, back to the high level designs, we decided to write the module fully in C sharp. Previously, with the incorporation of package management, that was written in C sharp, and PowerShell Get itself was written in PowerShell. Um, and with the package provider module, it was going from PowerShell to C sharp, back to PowerShell, back to C sharp, and we've just completely gotten rid of all that. Um, and that should help with improved performance. Um, it'll allow us to use specific libraries that we weren't able to use before, like the new NuGet client and NuGet server libraries. Um, in general, will help us integrate better with the PowerShell repository itself. Um, so one of our goals was definitely to have a more simplified commandlet interface and have more straightforward disambiguous parameters. And so that was something that we've been thinking a lot about and iterating on. Um, so we've been trying to have limited parameter sets, trying to have parameters that are more um, 
descriptive in what they're actually doing and hopefully doing the things that you expect them to do. And so we'd love feedback on that as well. Um, one of the exciting new features that's um, in development with V3 is having a local caching system. And that's specifically going to help improve searching for modules or searching for commandlets on the PowerShell gallery. So that'll help speed things up dramatically. Uh, and of course, um, we wanted to make sure that PowerShell Get V3 would still be compatible with Windows PowerShell. So it's going to be compatible with 5.1 uh, PowerShell Core and PowerShell 7. So anything above 5.1, you're good to go. And this module will still work side by side with lower versions of PowerShell Get. So your old scripts will still work. You won't be broken but you can still have the new functionality and the new features of what's in V3. So I'm just going to talk through the day zero experience with using V3. And the first thing that we want to do is use install with the pre-release parameter to get the latest version of PowerShell get. And I'll just show you what that looks like really quickly. Uh, but I've already done this, so we'll just ignore this for now. And we'll take a look at the new V3 commandlets. And you can see that there's a lot fewer commandlets than there were previously. And we can just do a quick side-by-side -side comparison. So you can see the V2 commandlets with the V3 commandlets. And you can see that commandlets like find have gone from specifying the individual resources to just being a more generalized find PSC resource. Um, and the same is also true for other commandlets like get, uh, we've got install, uh, publish, let's see, um, save, and then we've got uninstall and update. Um, so all of that has gone from the more specific commandlets to a more generalized version. And we'll just do a quick deep dive into some of the more interesting commandlets. Let's see. Um, so for example, find PSC resource. you can see that the parameters have changed as well. Um, so now a new parameter that we have is type. And there you can specify whether you want a module, a script, a DSC resource, a role capability, or command, um, or any combination of those five. And what's really nice is that you can now simultaneously search for both a module or a script. Um, if, for example, you know the name of what you want, but not specifically what it is. And another new parameter is the version parameter. So instead of having required version or min version or max version, we now just have a simple version parameter, which accepts a single version version range or a wildcard using NuGet versioning syntax. And Cindy will show this later on, uh, but the rest of the parameters you should be familiar with since they carried over from V2. Uh, so now we'll just take a look at install PS resource. Uh, let's see. So you can see that we've got three parameter sets and I'll let Cindy go over the last two parameter sets a little bit later on. Um, they have the required resource parameter and the required resource file. Uh, but we'll just talk about this first one here, which you're probably more familiar with. Um, and we've discussed the version parameter already. That's the same as with finds, but we now have a no clobber parameter as opposed to allow clobber. We have a trust repository parameter for trusting for a single install. And then we've differentiated between force and reinstall. So you can now completely cl over, clobber over a package that you've already installed with the reinstall parameter. And we have quiet for suppressing progress bar output. Awesome. Thanks, Amber. That was a great demo um, and a great intro to see um, the commandlet interface and how to get started. Um, now I want to talk to you guys about some new features that are already available today. So, so far we have had three preview releases, um, soon to be four. 
Um, and so we have already released a number of um, top customer requests um, from past versions of the module. So um, I will be demoing all of these so you get a, a more of a taste of them, but just to enumerate them when you so when you go back um, to look at this slide, you can see um, we have repository priority, um, repository wildcard search, NuGet version syntax, inversion wildcard support, support for NuGet v2 and now v3 endpoints for PS repositories. Um, we have added a new parameter to install for required resources that can take in JSON or hash table. Um, we have a new command or parameter for install also called required resource file, which can take in JSON or PSD1 files for input. Um, we've introduced clobbering by default, so no clobber switch is now available. And this is part of the just make it work effort for sure, um, as is the repository priority item. Um, we've added a reinstall parameter for install, which has allowed us to disambiguate um, the behavior of the force parameter. Um, more on that in the demo portion as well. Um, we have also added some um, additional features to save, so you can save as a NUPKIG. And we've really focused on this idea of better NUPKIG integration overall. Um, and then you can also save with or without metadata XML. So with that, I'm going to jump into some demos and show you guys some of these awesome features. Um, in this console, you'll see that I have the latest preview version of PowerShell Get. You'll notice the commandlet interface that Amber just spoke to, where we have um, some pared down commandlets that focus on PS resources. Here you'll see that for comparison's sake, I also have um, an instance of PowerShell with um, the latest stable version of PowerShell get label loaded in. So that's version 2.2.4. So you'll notice things like find command, find DSC resource, find module. Um, so the first uh, command that I really want to focus on and show you some of the new features we've added to is register PS resource repository. So here you can see I'm registering a PS resource repository. So these used to be called a PS repository. You'll see that I've named it az artifacts because it's an azure artifacts feed um, and that i've provided this url one thing to notice about the url is that it's a nuget v3 feed so this is a new feature that's now available in powershell get 3.0 whereas previously v3 feeds were not allowed so we can go ahead and register this here um, and you'll also notice that i included a priority parameter and why this is really important is because if you're like me and you have multiple repository is registered, and you've tried to do something like this, install PS Script Analyzer, then you've definitely gotten this issue before where it's going to return with an error that the module was found in multiple repositories, and you need to specify one. What the priority allows you to do is to pre-order your repositories so the one from the lowest priority repository is just installed. Um, the scale for priority runs from 0 to 50, with the PowerShell gallery being automatically installed with a priority 50. So now if I want to do something like find um, PS resource and let's say I want to find the ships module that's in my feed. I'm going to specify the repository. Easy artifacts. And I'm going to need to provide credential. We'll talk more about what we're looking forward to in the credential experience later on and where our open questions are there. But for now I'll use get credential. I'll provide my username. Password. And you'll see that um, I quickly get returned this version of ships. Um, 0.8 dot one that I already have in my feed. Um, and so with this, you can see if I run get PS repository, because <laughs> you know what I did is that I forgot um, PS resource. There we go. Now my tab completion will work. Awesome. You'll see that I have my three feeds registered, and if I expand this a little bit, you can see them there. So now if I want to use find module 
to search across these modules, I have a few options um, that have been added in our find PS resource commandlet, which is the one I'm going to talk a little bit about next. So if I'm going to just, I'm just going to clear my buffer right here. Cool, give myself a full screen. So if I run find PS resource, and I want to look for the ships module, and I just run that, it's going to return the version for me from the repository with the lowest priority. So as we just saw, I registered my easy artifacts feed with um, a priority 10. So that's why that's going to be returned. And so the reason why we have this experience um, is because it allows you to know which version of the module will be installed if you were to, um, for example, run install PS resource on the same command. However, if I want to see it across all repositories, I'll do something like this with the repository wildcard. And now you'll see that it gets returned in all these three various feeds. You'll see that I have it in Azure Artifacts, that it's published to the PowerShell gallery, and then it's also published in the test gallery. Um, I can also search um, across versions. We've also added wildcard support for version. So before, if I was using, um, say, find module, on ships, um, I would not be able to, or I would um, have these various version parameters. I have minimum version parameter, I've got a maximum, I've got a required, and I've got all versions. So with our new version parameter, we've sort of pared things down, made it simpler, and introduced NuGet syntax support for versioning. So now um, if I run this same command, but I can instead specify a version range that I'm interested in. So whereas a wildcard is going to show me all versions, maybe I want um, the latest possible version um, between 0.7 and 1. And it looks like I typed in something wrong there, and I sure did. I'm going to need a zero there. Great. And so now it's going to return that latest version for me from each of these repositories. What I'm going to do here is I'm just going to So now I want to search just on the PS gallery. So I'm going to specify that as my repository. And I want the latest version after um, seven now. So I'm going to leave that second part of the syntax blank and that's going to give me that versioning. Um, if I want the, the latest version, for example, maybe under um, 0.7, I can do comma 0.75. Let's say that. And I have an error there again because I forgot my zero. Great, so that is going to return to me version um, 0.7.2. So you can see how flexible that version string ranges can be, and especially the benefit of having wildcard support for, both for repositories as well as versions, um, particularly when you're finding searching for modules. Great, I also want to highlight some of the features we've added to install PS resource. Um, because I think this really highlights two of our themes of this development of the module, um, with the first being just make it work, um, and the second one being the principle of least surprise. Um, so the first thing I want to highlight um, is that we have um, decided to have clobbering by default, and instead added this no clobber switch. Um, so say I want to install um, a resource, I can just do install PS resource, um, say my secret module, and I don't have to worry about the fact that it may have um, a commandlet that is already available in another module. I want this module, I know I want to, so I just want it to install when I run install PS resource on it. However, if I do want to be extra cautious there and want to allow for no clobber, I can specify that as necessary. Um, two other features that we've sort of, two new commandlets, or sorry, parameters that we've added um, that also help facilitate 
this just make it work um, feature is the disambiguation of the force parameter. So in place of force, which originally had two meanings, um, both to uh, reinstall, um, so it checked if the module was already installed, if another version was already installed, and also trust repository. Um, when, if you have an untrusted repository, it'll give you that interactive prompt every time. Um, so therefore, um, if you wanted to um, install a module in an automated setting, um, you'd have to use this force parameter when it doesn't necessarily always what you want it. Maybe you just wanted to trust the repository in that situation, or maybe you just want it to install. Um, by separating this out, these um, two different functionalities into two different parameters, um, we hope to alleviate this problem. Um, so if you want to say um, just trust a repository because you trust it for a particular module, but don't want to trust the repository generally, that's a great time when you may want to throw that trust repository switch into your automated script. If there's something going wrong with your module, um, maybe uh, you think you have a corrupted file or something like that and you just can't quite diagnose what's missing, it's a great time to use that just reinstall and get a fresh version of the uh, resource. Either way, um, we want it to be unsurprising based on the parameters you choose and as often as possible to just work. We really want to um, limit the times where you have to rerun install. Um, in addition, we also added some new um, parameters around um, ways that you can input resources and, and specifically we added two new parameters. So you'll notice this required resource parameter as well as this required resource file. Um, you might remember one of our goals or themes of the module was around um, making sure that we could better manage dependencies. And this has a lot to do with the various um, places where PowerShell Get is used, being used now today. Um, for example, in functions, container, CICD, um, where you might want to be able to specify required resources in various different ways. So for this, um, for the required resource parameter, it's going to accept either a hash table or a JSON input. So I have an example here of, of both of those. So here we have the hash table example. I'm specifying two modules. One's called configuration, and I want a version in that range. They're the latest possible version in that range. Um, and then I also want pester, and I just want it from the PowerShell gallery. Um, so it's going to prompt me. Great, and I can install that. Um, the other option is going to be um, a JSON input. Um, so you can see that I'm passing in a JSON object here. And I'm going to also not install this one. Great. And then the third option is going to be a required resource file. Um, and so though that will support both a JSON file as well as a PSD1 file. So in this case, I'm going to do something like um, install PS resource. I'm going to specify um, a required resource file. And then I have my um, file saved at resources.json. And so then that's going to allow me to install as well. And if you're curious what that file looks like, we can pop it open if we do code JSON. And you'll see it's the um, same format as with the um, required resource input as JSON. So that gives you some new ways to manage your dependencies um, and manage installation, as well as hopefully simplifies and pairs down the installation process. So I'm going to talk a bit about uh, what is going to be available by GA, um, some new features that aren't out in the current releases. Um, with the next release, we are going to have published functionality. So that's going to include publishing scripts and modules, um, which you can do with lower versions of PowerShell Git, but it's also going to include publishing nut kegs. We're going to implement having a local cache that's specifically meant to interact with the PowerShell gallery to help improve performance, particularly with searching. We are going to have an update to the parameters in update PS resource. Um, and so you can update to a particular either patch version, um, minor version, major version. And um, something that's new with um, installing PS resources is the required resource parameter. 
also the required resource file parameter. Um, and with that, we are going to have a commandlet that helps provide a template for creating a required resource file. And then I'm going to do a little demo on the new way to publish modules to a repository. So this is pretty straightforward, but I've uh, created a test module um, previously. Um, and so all we're going to do is publish that module that I've created. So we'll just uh, use publish PS resource. Um, and then I'm going to specify the path where I've created my module. And I'm going to publish to the PowerShell gallery repository. Um, and then of course, I'm going to include my API key. OK, and just to verify, I am going to go to the PowerShell gallery and make sure that it was uploaded properly. Let's see. OK, so there we've got our module. And let's scroll down. Yep, we've got the latest version just published a few seconds ago. Awesome. OK, so that's publishing the module. The cool thing, though, is that we can now uh, save the PS resource. We can save the module as a nut keg. So we'll just specify the module that we're looking for uh, from the gallery. And then we just want to specify that we're, we want it as, um, as a nut keg. And then I'm just going to specify the path where I want to save it to. Awesome. OK, so let's go to that path and make sure that it was saved there. Perfect. And you can see we've got our module, and it's saved as a nut keg. Um, and we have some open questions um, that we would love for feedback from the community on. Um, first question, um, do we need a save commandlet if we have a destination path parameter uh, for install PS resource? Is it better to have, sorry, <laughs> okay. uh, let's, okay, yeah, let's do that again. Okay. Um, and we have some open questions that we would love some feedback on from the community. Um, if we have a save commandlet, uh, do we need a destination path parameter or vice versa? If we have a destination path parameter, do we need a save commandlet? Um, and should dependencies by default be installed um, or do we want an include dependencies parameter to specify to install that? And what's the best way to manage um, credentials across repositories? And do we need a force parameter? Um, is that necessary? And what do you expect the force parameter to do? Um, and what do you need as a user in order to migrate to PowerShell get v3? And how can we make it easier for you to try out PowerShell Get v3 and um, adopt it? Great, thanks, Amber. Yeah, these are some really key questions that we've been wrestling with right now. Um, I know some of these we've gotten feedback on you all through the RFC process. Um, but if you do have opinions on these questions, um, if you have scenarios you think we should consider, maybe gotchas, um, since you've already maybe experienced some of these things, um, we would really, really value your opinion, particularly on these issues, but on any issues. Um, and at this point, since we have begun the development of the module and we have a few releases in now, um, the best place for you to give us that feedback is through our GitHub repo, which is PowerShell slash PowerShell get. Um, alternatively, um, feel free to reach out to Amber and I um, to talk more about these things, and hopefully we can have some discussions about this as well um, during the Q&A sessions um, on Tuesday and Wednesday.
So we also wanted to talk to you a little bit about some other things that we're considering post GA. So I just want to say, first of all, that this is not an exhaustive list, um, but just some, some things that we are looking at. So the first one is need of credential management and credential persistence with secret management. Um, as many of you know, uh, a little over a year ago, we began an effort to use the um, Visual Studio cred credential provider with um, Azure Artifacts to have that persistent credential experience. Um, we had some success with this, but also have had a lot of customers hit issues, um, especially around the various dependencies that are required. Um, one workaround we've talked a lot about is um, integration with secret, the secret management module and using that for credential persistence. Um, so that's definitely something we are considering and is in the works. Um, something else would be sh back shipping in Windows. It's a pretty significant process for us to add a module back in to ship in Windows PowerShell. However, we know that tons of users are in Windows PowerShell and that if you are on the version of PowerShell Get that ships with Windows PowerShell, the upgrade experience is extremely painful. So that's something we're considering. Um, could we ship in Windows? Um, we are exploring automatic updating of the cache in smart ways. So Amber talked to you a little bit about the local cache. Um, and so how, how we can best um, update that intelligently is something we're considering. Potentially this could even involve server-side caching. Um, we will explore uninstalling orphan dependencies or a depth clean. Um, one piece of feedback that we oftentimes get around the update experience is that it's really just installing a newer version. And so um, how can we make the experience of cleaning up old versions a little bit easier? Um, we have also had a lot of requests for system-wide repository configurations. So that's something we'll also consider post-GA um, and many, many more things. So these are just a list of things that come top of mind. We also have the VNext label on GitHub in our repo to check out um, a full list of issues that we're considering. So none of these are things we're committed to at this point, um, but are still weighing your feedback on um, just hopefully we can start knocking out once we hit GA for 3.0. So with that, our roadmap, um, look out for more preview releases. Um, they're hopefully will be coming soon and will continue to come out through the summer. Um, please try them out and give us feedback. Um, we hope to have an RC by the end of summer 2020 with a fall GA. However, this is totally tentative. Um, and I want to emphasize as much as possible that our releases are not date driven. So even if I told you a date, uh, it wouldn't necessarily be true. Um, but rather quality driven. Um, so when we feel like we have a truly high quality product, that is when we will move to GA. Um, and so part of this is that PowerShell Get V2 isn't going anywhere for the time being. Um, as you saw, one of our high level goals was to enable a side by side experience so that we could have a smooth transition. Um, what that transition is going to look like exactly is still one of our open questions. Um, so for the time being, um, you can expect both experiences to be there. Um, if 3.0 meets a high enough bar, it will ship in 7.1, um, but this is very TBD and really dependent on that, um, on PowerShell Get 3.0 meeting that high bar. Finally, um, I wanted to, since we've gone through this content, I wanted to hit on a few terms that come up a lot and just clarify um, what they all mean. So one get, one get, PowerShell Get, what are all these things? How do they relate to each other? What do they mean? So when you hear one get, um, it's the same thing as package management. Um, and so this is originally a dependency of PowerShell get and was originally designed for Windows PowerShell. Um, as Amber talked about at the beginning, this is now an officially deprecated project. Um, so don't expect um, bug fixes or any development to be occurring there. Um, it was a really ambitious project that set out with these big goals to be Windows package um, provider, um, but really hit some challenges. Um, as it went on and at a certain point it became something that was um, not really feasible to maintain. Um, what is PowerShell Get? PowerShell Get is our current investment for the PowerShell package management experience. And so right now our focus with 3.0 is um, around removing these other dependencies. Um, our other focuses are making it a really great experience for specifically PowerShell resources. So PowerShell Get is all about PowerShell resources with sort of an expanded profile around Nutkicks now as well. Um, we also really want to focus on a consistent cross-platform experience. Whereas the original PowerShell Get and Package Management were focused on making a great experience on Windows, um, PowerShell Get 3.0 is really focused about everywhere PowerShell is available. Um, and as we mentioned, the 3.0 version is currently in a preview state. 
So finally, then what's Winget? So Winget is the Windows Package Manager client. Um, and this is the package manager that was announced at Build um, just a couple of weeks ago. Um, as And it's in a, currently in very early stages. Um, it's at a preview state with an aspirational V1 about a year from now in spring 2021. Um, this is designed to be a really lightweight, thin package manager that works on Windows only, but works across a wide number of packages. Um, Internally, we are working with them um, on PowerShell integration and roadmap. So I don't have a ton to share there at this point, but definitely more to come. Um, definitely want to emphasize um, that they're still in the early stages. And while they have slightly different goals from us um, as their who their very early previews are targeted to, they um, are very open and understanding of the fact that um, of the importance of PowerShell integration and support. Um, and I also just really want to shout out you guys for opening that issue on the repo and really showing how um, vibrant the PowerShell community is. Um, that's huge and goes a long way in terms of making this integration story come together um, by the time of GA next year. So with that, um, a quick summary. First of all, try out our preview if I haven't already said that a million times. Um, and give us feedback by opening issues at PowerShell PowerShell Get. If you do still have issues with PowerShell Get 2.0, um, we're trying to triage those, although I'll, I'll admit um, it sometimes slips down a bit because we're so focused on getting 3.0 and making that experience great. But you can open those issues at PowerShell PowerShell Get V2. Um, we did fork the repo and rename it to V2 before we released our first preview of 3.0, which now is PowerShell Get repo. So get excited for PowerShell Get 3.0. There's um, a lot to look forward to, and hopefully some of those pain points that you've been dealing with for years will um, be alleviated. So thanks again.